Hello everyone, I'm Necron, a long-time StarCraft Modern player. I have released more than 70 campaign missions, written hundreds of AI scripts and animation scripts, and I can confidently say that I know an unhealthy amount of things about StarCraft. Today I wanted to talk with you a little bit about pathfinding. Over the nearly 25 years StarCraft has been out, people and content creators have proliferated many myths about its somewhat awkward pathfinding. A lot has been said particularly about units like Dragoons or Goliaths, which, depending on what you've heard, have a reputation of either being the biggest units or changing their collision sizes mid-movement. I'll include a link to sources of both of these claims in the description of this video. Today we'll look at the actual in-engine animation scripts and collision data of these units, and I will show you why most of what you've heard about StarCraft's pathfinding is not quite right. I would hope that after watching this video, pathfinding will feel less like magic or something that's random, and more like an actual system that just can get a little bit quirky at times. To discover what StarCraft pathfinding has in store for us, let us analyze the Dragoon. The Dragoon is a unit with a size of 32 by 32 pixels, with its movement controlled by iScript. That is, an animation script that tells the unit how many pixels forward it needs to move each frame of its walking animation. Some similar units include Ultralisks, a larger 32x32 32 unit, as well as Siege Tanks, Goliaths and Rivers, all of them 32x32 32 units with iScript controlled movement. Out of all of these units, only the Goliath has a reputation that comes anywhere close to the Dragoon. One has to wonder though, if each unit I've mentioned has about the same collision size, as well as the same type of movement control, what could be making any of them worse than the other? Let us look at the collision in engine. You can see yellow outlines around each unit. Those are the unit's real collision sizes. It doesn't perfectly match with unit visuals, and it's not absolute. There are some special circumstances, such as burrowing, where unit collision boxes can be forcefully pushed into each other after which the units will attempt to scramble in random directions until they can get out of overlapping collision bounds. When dragoons move, you may notice that the collision size doesn't really change. Regardless of what happens in the animation visually, it doesn't expand nor contract. Multiple times we can see dragoons push out their legs without clipping into other nearby goons. Despite this, we do actually see either one of them sometimes bump into another and move away from the group, or even a group of goons stuttering as if they struggled to move at their full speed. Why could that be? When we look at other units of similar or even larger sizes, they move in a slightly more smooth manner and don't seem to bump into each other quite as often. Uh, sure, they do exhibit the box standard StarCraft unit instinct of wandering away when they get blocked on a ramp, but outside of that they are relatively predictable. Let's dive into the animation scripts to find what makes Dragoons different. The Siege Tank has pretty much the perfect movement script for a StarCraft unit. It maintains the same speed of 4 pixels per frame all throughout its movement. That makes Siege Tanks relatively easy to move around at a consistent speed in spite of their size. When you look at the Dragoon though, it's a different story. Of particular interest is the jump from 8-8 eight, eight to 2-2 two, two, and back up to 6. In practice, combined with the fact that in real scenarios this movement may be randomly desynced between different Dragoons, this means that one Goon might cover 16 pixels of distance in the same time another covers only 4. I wanted to stress again that at no point during their movement cycle did their collision change. I'm not sure where that myth originated, it's probably just because their animation is somewhat suggestive in that regard, and it could have felt like an easy explanation of their perceived quirky bounciness. But even that bounciness sort of comes into question when we examine how paths are predicted and handled. The majority of them are actually pretty accurate if we know that units are not just walking on the plane of collisions, but also navigating through pathfinding regions, a navmesh-esque plane made up of connected shapes placed within navigable terrain. We can see that most of the cases where Dragoons do split up happen when one part of the group goes through a different pathfinding region from the rest. Two, 
when we look at the Ultralisk walking script, we can see that it doesn't appear to be significantly better than the Dragoon. From frame sets 2 to 5, you can see them move 3, 2, 7 and 8 pixels over 4 frames. Similarly to the Dragoon, this results in some Ultralisks covering 15 frames whilst others cover only 5. But due to a combination of their typically smaller numbers and a script where their speed is more meandering and less jumpy, the Ultralisk escapes the Dragoon's reputation. What's interesting to me is that our second culprit, the Goliath, doesn't appear to have that bad of a script. None of the speed differences get quite as bad as the Dragoon, nor is its size anything of note. I, personally, think that the reputation they get boils down to them being a mass-produced unit that we subconsciously compare to the smoother siege tanks and the Veltrus as we attempt to move our mech armies around. Now, seeing regions, we can see that there's some logic to how units bounce back when blocked. They don't just move in random directions, they circle back to a previous region, try to re-enter the one they got stuck in, and attempt to center before trying to proceed again. Speaking of, Voltres are also a 32 by 32 unit, but their movement is flingy controlled. That means that they have a smooth acceleration slash deceleration curve up to a top speed. Their movement is essentially as smooth as possible in StarCraft. Yet they still suffer from the same RAM problems as everything else. Because there is no push priority in StarCraft 1, once a unit is blocked, that's it. It has to circle back or stand still and wait until something moves. In this example map, this is particularly painful, because regions around the ramp are very large. This means that moving into a neighboring region can mean that the unit appears to unexpectedly move a whole screen's worth from the player's point of view. To summarize, to the degree that pathfinding issues are even specific to the Dragoon, its infamous movement mostly stems from its walking animation script, and the quick jumps between different speeds it has as it wobbles around. But, um, it's really a minor part of perceived inconveniences, of which most aren't unique to the Dragoon at all. There are two actual buffing related bugs that I'd like to touch upon. First one being, Dragoons and Goliaths are pretty infamous for being unable to walk up installation stairs. Well, in reality it's just one set of stairs, the left-facing ones, and only when trying to walk up them and not down. I don't think this is really related to other movement issues of theirs. And as you can see, siege tanks also very much struggle with this, even though they have the perfect movement script. If we try decreasing dragoon size by just one pixel vertically and horizontally, they climb up without any bigger issues, at least certainly without needing more than one click. The second bug is almost never a problem for players, but it can cause an infinite script hang for the AI. It occurs when you try to merge an archon at a very specific angle, and then both high templates that are supposed to be used for the merge fail to center on each other for, and just kind of, you know, spin forever. It's not that spectacular of a bug, but from an AI script writing perspective it can be annoying, because when it occurs you just never progress with the script that's waiting for like archon training. Once again, changing the unit size by just one pixel, uh, in this case making the high templars one pixel wider, seems to fix the issue. That's all for this video, and if you found it interesting, remember to let me know in the comments or by leaving a like. If you are interested in my StarCraft mods, I leave a Discord link as well as a download link for EUD AIB in the description. Thanks for watching!